Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of the Just As Gamers podcast, yet to be titled. We don't have a complete name for that yet. Uh, I'll introduce myself first. I'm Mark, also known as Purple Lemon, um, on Twitch, Instagram, literally every social media I'm known as Purple Lemon. Chris, if you want to introduce yourself quickly. Uh, I'm Chris Coventry. Um, I'm Jedi Snowman in pretty much everything, either with a dot or with an underscore. Um, yeah. This is going to be... Yeah, this is this. I know this sounds really strange, and I'm obviously jumping on board immediately. You started babbling. Yeah, nothing new there. You'll get used to it. Um, this is a long time coming for us. I think doing this. Yeah, We've it been is. Talking yeah, about definitely. Doing this for for over a, well, nearly a year actually. Um, yeah, we're in a really, really good position. We're really, really excited. So bear with us when we work through the the kinks because there's going to no doubt be a lot of them. <laughs> but yeah, we're in this for the ride. Yeah, the long ride. Yeah, definitely. Cool. And yourself, Washington. Yep, I'm uh, Andy, known as Washington in the uh, in the Just Us Gamers community. Um, outside of that, Opkite, most of the time. Um, yeah, and that's better. That's that's me. Yeah, I'm really excited to have both of you guys guys on board. Me and Chris, we've been talking about this for like you say a long time, and uh, it's nice to have you, Washington. Well, we've been playing games together for well over a year now, and uh, yeah. It's, it's good to put a face to you, actually, because this is the first time myself and Chris have actually seen your face. Yeah, I know you probably you might have seen a bit of Chris. You've probably been in my streams and seen my face anyway. But yeah, seeing your face for the first time, it's like, you're, you're definitely not what I uh, pictured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get that a lot. Yeah, yeah. 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 That the voice doesn't match the face. Sometimes. Yeah. For some reason, in my mind, in the background, you're, you've got a whiskey somewhere or a bottle of Jack Daniels on the table. I don't know why, uh, always. I know it's a bit early. Usually, usually a Jameson. Um, oh, there you go. Not too far. There you go, see? <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so what are you guys playing at the moment? I mean, myself. Go on, I'll let you go first. Yeah, go on. Uh, well, <clears throat> at the moment, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. I've just been kind of, uh, kind of getting the back catalog of my Steam library, just the games that I either played an hour of or uh, or never played at all. I'm trying to kind of chip away at those uh, before I dive into something new. But the big ones lately, I've been playing Battletech. I don't know if you guys played that at all. It came out, I think, two or three years ago. No, I've not played that. No. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, uh, I mean, if you like strategy. Um, it's yeah. like Command and Conquer, like Civilization kind of thing. Uh, no, it's more, There, there is a name for it. It's like uh, turn-based. Is it, is it an RTS uh, or is it not quite? Yeah, it's it's a turn-based strategy. Yeah, yeah. Um, ba- based off of like I'm assu- I think it was a board game, uh, okay, like a tabletop game. That oh I never, yeah, I never played. Um, really mm. good, really in depth. Loving that. Also, uh, kind of kind of started up on uh, Tarkov again. So yeah, looking same. Playing that with you guys and uh, maybe some other members of uh, on the on the Jug Discord. But yeah, yeah, that's been, that's occupied most of my gaming time lately. Mm. And yourself, Chris, what yeah, are you playing? Um, at the moment, I'm still trying to chip away at EFT, a scrape from Tarkov. Um, as you know, obviously, this is like the umpteenth wipe that it's had. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Personally, whenever it goes for another wipe, I sort of get a bit, uh, like I've got to do it all again. <laughs> and every time, obviously, they do a good update, they add some really, really good features. Um, I'm really like, I, I seem to be watching a lot more at the moment of Tarkov runs than actually playing myself. Yeah, I'm the same. Um, it's sort of the thing you sort of want to play about 10.30 of the night time, but then by the time you motivate yourself to sort of get it all up and running, set it up, and you, yeah, then checking out who's online. Yeah, it's just a bit daunting, really, sometimes. But no, it's just really, it's, it's an amazing game. Yeah. Anyone that likes the the real-time warfare, I guess you'd call it, um, element of shoot up or first-person shooters, then you, that's definitely what you want to look out for. Um, mm-hmm. The methodology beyond it is just incredible. Yeah, the fact you got, yes, anyone that's played it would know that. Um Apart from Tarkov, there's a lot of Valheim or Valheim, however you pronounce it. Yeah, Valheim. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've been playing purposely playing a lot of um, single player content on Valheim just to sort of get my head around things. Uh, really, really enjoying it. I really like the slow pace of it at the moment. Um, it's definitely a, a the best PlayStation One game I've ever played. Um, but yeah, the building element of it is obviously got a bit of Minecraft in there, got a bit of exploration in there. It's mm. got a, not really a steep learning curve either. The you know. It, there's parts of that game where it genuinely looks like a PS1 game, but other times when I don't know, maybe the 
night starts to kick in. Oh, when when the lighting bleeds through the trees, yeah. it's it's better than I play DayZ, play Tarkov, like you know. But the lighting effects in Valheim are far non some of the best lighting effects I've seen in video games, and I don't have a ray tracing video card at the moment, and it's yeah, just no, insane. That. Yeah, it's just yeah, it, it it does. It genuinely takes your breath away. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Anyone that, obviously anyone that hasn't tried it, um, check out a couple of YouTube videos for it. Just mm. so it looks like Civic or a cup of tea. But yeah, I wouldn't have thought there's many people that don't like that type of game. Now we will um, have um, overlays on this at the moment anyway, so there will be a bit of gameplay playing down in one of the yeah. corners somewhere around. Yeah. Yeah, and again, there's someone probably always playing Valheim in in the Discord. Um, any questions you've got about anything, just, obviously just drop them in there. We can happily answer them for you. But of course, mm -hmm. there's a hundred umpteen videos of people playing it online. Um, I have watched a couple of streamers like Sequisha and even Clean start playing it on Twitch. And some of the stuff they're into is just, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting to that stage, but I appreciate this 20 hours in at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's really, really good. Really highly recommended. Uh, yes. Other than that, um, my usual amount of retro stuff, really. Um, nothing too major to talk about at the moment it's more those two i'm focusing on and mm. i do want to get back into hades again just to finish it off i got through i think i went through about four four or five times yeah that's one of those games where i've kind of started it but had other stuff playing and it's one of those ones you, you have to put a bit of time into it yeah yeah it's not a just play it for 30 40 minute kind of game you've got to bang in a few hours it's what you consider to be a popcorn game you just pick up and play it but then you play it and then it's three hours later yeah. and yeah. you're thinking Oh, I've got to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah. No, it's it's really good. Again, another great game. Mm -hmm. I, I think I actually look. I would love to get back into it though. Yeah, I, I just keep hearing everyone talking about how amazing it is. And of course, the amount of rewards it won last year is just incredible. Yeah, I mean, it won those for a reason. It's genuinely good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, That's good for me. Myself, I've recently. Uh, like yourself, Chris, I kind of like, I jump into Tarkov, jump out of Tarkov, jump into Tarkov, jump out of Tarkov, and I'm back in it now, and I don't want to put it down. Yeah. I, I play it, and I'm just like, right, I'm hooked again. I want to just keep playing you. And I am dying, although we've not had a wipe that long ago, I'm dying for the next wipe, so we can have Streets of Tarkov. I'm so excited for that map. When that comes, I don't think I'll play another map. Well, I will, but I just want to concentrate on Streets of Tarkov. It's just like... The whole urban warfare, and as you guys know, the viewers and the listeners probably don't know, I'm ex-military. So Tarkov, for me, is my perfect game. I play a lot of squad as well. Squad's very realistic military, but there's something about Tarkov, it's just, it's, it excites me every time. Because I'm like, oh, there's that part of a weapon goes onto that. I know how that works. Although, Chris, you're getting used to that, and Washington, I know you know a little bit about weapon mechanics and stuff anyway. All of his armor three background. Yeah, as well. I'm I'm armor two, armor three background as well. Yeah. Um, I'm just now I'm just, I'm just I'm in love with the game again. So it, does, it definitely goes through those those, those spurts. Definitely, I, I fall can't... in love and I fall out of Tarkov just as quick because you, you go through that. Right, I've done four raids. Oh, I've died every raid. I'm like oh, I can't bother with this anymore. And then you get that final kill and you're like, I'm hooked. I'm so hooked. There's a steep learning curve in the game, but I love it. There really is, yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, I've be, um, yeah. been playing a lot of uh, Jedi Fallen Order. So I started playing it on the PlayStation 4 maybe six, seven months ago. It was at the time in my life where I was really busy and never really got into it. And I've jumped back into it in the last few days and, again, hooked. Absolutely love it. It's probably the best Star Wars story outside of the Star Wars film universe. I love it. It's, it's insanely good. Oh, if you get a chance to play it, play it. It's amazing. Definitely, I mm. second that. Yeah, it's it's very un it's yeah uncharted Tomb Raidery with a Star Wars element and with lightsabers. Man, how bad can it be? Yeah, uh, and yeah. also with my love of horror, I've been jumping into a bit of Five Nights at Freddy's in VR, which is terrifying. If anyone has jumped in my streams, they'll know I scream like a girl, even though I yeah. love horror games. Archive streams are on the site for that. Yeah. I've been, uh, I've been trying to catch one of those streams. Like, I don't think I've caught one yet. Yeah, there's loads of the VODs are on there still if you want to check it out. Okay. And uh, what else have we been playing? Um, other horror games. So it's actually the Resident Evil 25th anniversary today. Uh, it was just yesterday. Resident Evil, my favorite franchise. And I'm so annoyed with myself that I didn't stream any Resident Evil yesterday. I caught it at the end, at the end of the day. I was like, 
it's the 25th anniversary and I was so annoyed with myself because Resident Evil is my favourite franchise. If it wasn't for Resident Evil 1, I would not be playing horror games right now. I just, I'm so in love with that game. It's unbelievable. Resident Evil 1 is the game I've completed the most. No, like the back of my hand. Yeah, so I'm I'm really excited for Resident Evil 8. I cannot wait for Village. I think it's going to be, it's it's my most wanted game of this year by far like second to none i'm not excited for anything else apart from that game and we'll is just, there a just over a month. That, it is the 5th of may i believe it's around the 5th of may 5th oh, 7th wow. of may yeah it's early may so mm. we're literally just over a month away, Far away. Yeah. that'd be fantastic yeah yeah so i'll be streaming that non-stop i believe that's on ps4 and xbox oh it, it's year, a, it? they're not doing last last generation it's the first i believe it's the first game that's coming out that they're disregarding last generation they go in playstation 5 series x and pc only oh wow yeah it's literally the it's the, the first game i believe that they're just disregarding last generation and they go in true next gen yeah uh any games you guys are looking forward to this year yeah just an update on god of war 2 as you said i think we've mentioned before so there's this concern, no, not not concerns, because obviously the last one did the same thing. It sort of they kept very very quiet, even just the look mm. and feel of it until yeah, I think it was an E3 um, reveal, the initial one, where he was in these little wood shack, and then suddenly ah, and the whole crowd went ballistic, um, which is fantastic. I hope they're doing something along the same side. But honestly, if I personally, if I just got more of of God of War, um, as it is just a continuation of the story, especially what happens towards the end and the more of the story that opens up, no spoilers, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd be more than content with that. But yeah, that graphics engine is incredible. The team behind it are amazing. Yeah, I just read yeah, That's my most anticipated 2021. So part, pardon my ignorance here. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a God of War. I've never really played those games too much. And you're saying God of War 2. I thought there was a God of War 2. Uh, so there is there there is well, so yeah. there, there's God of War one two I believe three but then they've done what a lot of film franchises do as well they'll reintroduce the whole series and just call it God of War again yeah uh, okay they're not so actually calling this God of War two they're calling it Ragnarok I mean. Ragnarok yes but it is God of War two think of it as the current generation's God of War two okay. But on that note, they have said, well, not that they have said, nothing has been confirmed yet, but Sony are just not answering any questions about it. People are asking when's God of War, to, because they're, they're not releasing anything about it. They're not releasing any news, they're not releasing any footage. People are asking on Twitter mainly, when are we going to see God of War 2? And Sony just, they've not responded. But as soon as people ask about um, Horizon Forbidden What's the new one forbidden two seconds i do have it in my notes where is it uh forbidden west horizon forbidden west so if anyone's played zero dawn this is the follow-up to zero dawn as soon as people are asking about that they're giving instant answers but for god of war 2 they're just nothing they are blank stare facing it they're just completely disregarding every single question so which makes me think it's not going to come out this year when they've said it will be out in 2021. If they're just not answering any questions about it. It could also be. Like a, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Dwayne. It's fine. Could, is, there, is there any events coming up uh, that they could be waiting to like do some big sort of reveal? I mean, Obviously, I they're going to be doing the E3 and all that sort of stuff digitally online this year. But other than that, I don't think Sony have got anything planned at the moment. Square Enix have got something planned. Uh, Resident Evil have got something planned for next month, but I don't think uh, Sony have anything planned on paper at the moment. Okay. Yeah. I was just what can sometimes want sorry. to talk about? Because um, they want to do some sort of reveal. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Also, with um, AAA titles, if they have two on the calendar, they some companies, as in the Microsofts and the Sonys, don't often talk about games at the same time if they're in a, the relatively close release windows because mm -hmm. they want people to focus their attention oh i need to go out and buy horizon because god of war is not here yet yep. if there was a two-month gap between the two and they started promoting them both at the same time there could be a, oh i don't want to get horizon i want to wait for god of war yeah so it, it, it kind of I, I completely understand where, where both sides come from i i personally think it's definitely going to be a 2021 game yeah but it's just it's just well uh, no no yeah, i i, I 
I think it could be the end of the year, but I'm in the mind where it's going to be a 2022 game. I just, I really am. I I, the the other news on the delay this week was um, Gotham Knights. I, if you've played the Batman Arkham series, you'll know what Gotham Knights is. Um, they have basically said, yep, it's not going to come out this year, boys. Uh, see it in 2022. I don't think anyone expected it to come out this year anyway. Just if you'd seen the footage that they released when it was announced, that game was nowhere near ready. It wasn't even a year away. It looks amazing, but it, it wasn't even a year away at that point. So I don't think anyone actually thought it would be out this year. Mm. Oh, okay. That's a shame as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what news have we got this week? So... What are your guys' thoughts on uh, the free-to-play element of uh, PC and Xbox Game Pass at the moment? I mean, they've just announced Outriders Day 1 will be going straight to Game Pass. They've told, well, not they've told, a lot of news outlets are saying, guys, go cancel your pre-orders, it's going to Game Pass. I, yeah, personally, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, it's console only at the moment, unfortunately. Console only to start, yeah, but it will be coming to PC. Yeah, Boom, but I mean, but if you've got an this Xbox. Is, this has to be the Xbox strategy going forward. It really has to be. Is their day one exclusives? I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's great. I think mean, it will sell so sure many what, consoles. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm not sure what the last one was. It did that on where it did a day one. I think it was Outlanders, was it? There's I'm a good few sure. that were also day and date. So, Sea of Se Thieves is the biggest one I've played. I believe that was day one, straight on Game Pass. Yeah, see, they're doing the right thing. My only concern, as I'm sure everyone's is, is with their recent purchase of Bethesda. <laughs> So they become Xbox only games going forward. Um, but yeah, again, Microsoft are not going to go out and buy a company like Bethesda and then not release their stuff exclusively for their own. No, platform. of course it won't. No, it will be PC as well. I mean, they're finally oh, doing they something do. with, with that Bethesda acquisition. They are finally doing something. We, we've seen our first integration of that this week where they've released Bethesda games on Game Pass and PC Game Pass, not just Xbox. Like all your Elder Scroll games, Dooms all the Wolfenstein games are on there. There is an amazing catalogue of games on Game Pass right now. And it's not that expensive. Is it £10, £15 a month? And you're getting you, thousands yeah. of pounds worth of games. I think thousands. in the UK it's seven ninety nine for the standard Xbox Game Pass package, yep. of which the Battletech game that Washington was referring to is actually on that. Oh, is it? Ah, reason to check well, it out I then. I scanned it the other day. I thought, oh, I know someone playing that game. Mm. Um, but yeah. Yeah, you know, it's very, it's yeah, it's a no-brainer really. When it's seven ninety-nine, it's what a couple of quid less yeah. than Netflix. Mm. And for what you get on there, there's yeah, probably more hours of entertainment if you look at it in the long term. But yeah, yeah no, it's fantastic. Yeah, Xbox are in a really, really good price. They they weren't, but they are now. And yeah. obviously, you've probably seen no doubt in the news the uh, the PlayStation equivalent, which is now their incentive to get people to stay at home and play games. Yeah, they've uh, released they... a lot of free games. You don't even need to have PlayStation now for that, do you? Yeah, yeah, no. As long as you just basically got a PSN account, um, yeah. Over the next, I think it's four months. They said there's certain windows where if you grab something free of charge, it's yours forever. Mm. Starting off with Ratchet and Clank, I believe. Yes, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, uh, there's a few VR games if you've got a PlayStation VR on there. Um, and then the PlayStation Now this month's got some fairly decent games as well. So if you're a fan of Final Fantasy VII, like I am, the remake is on there right now. I don't think yeah. the PlayStation Now catalogue is as strong as the Xbox Game Pass catalogue oh, no. at all. But they're trying. But I don't think they're doing enough not to keep up with Xbox's side of things. I mean, yeah. look, at, look at the PlayStation 5. They, they, can't, they're sh they can't produce enough consoles at the moment. Now, is this the usual Sony PlayStation publicity thing or are they genuinely is it a covid issue i don't know i mean personally i think it's wouldn't say, i'm not going to say it's a market employer by any means but at the moment what we're hearing from what, what i've been listening to in people in the industry that they run podcasts which i'm quite a big fan of higher media outlets than us at the moment um is a lot of people are saying what is there now to do with your playstation 5 what games do you've got that you you can only play on PlayStation 5? Why would they flood the market with consoles that have literally got no games for? Or they sh they'd be shooting yeah. themselves in the foot. So they're, the way they're sporadically doing it, which is releasing their you know, 25,000 units 
per European area or the deals they have with Best Buy and the Game Spot and the Game Stops and the what have you. Um, yeah, it's, you can kind of understand what they're doing. They've probably got warehouses full of hundreds of thousands of these units just waiting to ship yeah. out at the right time. Yeah, my my personal opinion is they've got the consoles. They're just not shipping them for certain reasons. What those reasons are, nobody will probably ever know. But yeah, I think that it's definitely a publicity thing in a way. Washington, have you ever? Are you a console fan of any type? Do you have a preference? Uh, if I had a preference, it would it would probably I would lean towards PlayStation. Um, that's what I've owned more of uh, at the moment. I don't have any consoles, just uh, strictly PC. But I would I would lean towards PlayStation. Hmm. I, I yeah. have all consoles, but I seem to go to my Xbox more than my PlayStation. But that's a personal thing, and the only reason for that is. All of my friends have Xboxes. Only some of my friends have Playstations. So if we have a gaming night together, it's Xbox. And I do find the Xbox UI a lot easier to use than the PlayStation UI. Especially on the newer consoles. Yeah, I remember conversations we were having um, in a previous workplace with a couple of colleagues of mine. And we were saying that when the whole, you know, the Xbox versus PlayStation wars were being talked about many, many moons ago, we I sort of summarized it and said one thing, the war's going to be won by the exclusivities. You go to a PlayStation to play yep. your Last of Us's. You go to an Xbox to play your Forza's, although there's obviously Gran Turismo on the other side. So it's, it swings and roundabouts, really. Mm. And that's where you're going to keep your, I mean, as I say, prior to you know, the Xbox Game Pass, revelation which is that's what it is to be honest yeah. with you that's what every company wants but with amazon trying it now with their lunar platform yep um yeah and obviously stadia we won't talk about stadia um what they attempted um yeah there's going to be it's going to be the exclusive people are going to be loyal to their brand aren't they yeah i mean if oh. you're lucky enough to own a console then you're going to aim for those targeted triple a titles if yep. you're lucky enough to own a pc then there, it, it, there's obviously always the second guess when it comes to an Xbox. It's normally someone that owns a, a high-end PC wouldn't necessarily then go, you know what, I have to have an Xbox. Because mm-hmm. obviously the better experience, dare I say, is on a higher-end PC. Whereas obviously a PlayStation 5, officially there is no emulation of any type. That it's, right. it's a separate entity to itself, as it were. So those games only exist in that ethos kind of thing. Yeah. With, with the um, Xbox and PC Game Pass side of things, I wouldn't be surprised if Steam don't come along with something in the next couple of years and do their version of it. Some I kind of service think... package. Yeah, personally, I don't think Steam has to. They don't have to because of the amount of... You can go on the Steam store and look at the sales. You'll think, oh, I've got £20, $20 to buy a game. You see one game for... Ten dollars. There's something about the Steam Store. It makes you think I've got to spend all my money there now. Steam Store, for me, doesn't save me money because I go on the Steam sales. I'm like, right, I'll buy this. I'll buy that. Oh, because that's cheap. I'll buy that. I'm I'm two hundred pound worse off within ten minutes. There's just something <laughs> about the Steam sales for me. It just gets me every time. Yeah, the same thing. I'll I'll hesitate. Um... To dive into a, a newish game for sixty bucks or sixty dollars. Yep. Um, but as soon as a sale hits, I'll buy three games for mm-hmm. eighty dollars. Yep. Because they're on sale, and I'll I'll have no qualms about it in my head. That works out fine. But save I'm money. spending more money. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell myself I got to spend money to save money. It, it somehow works out in my head. But yeah, I, I fall fall victim to that. Yeah, all the time. And then that pile of shame just keeps growing and growing and growing. Yeah, it and does we all indeed. have that amazing back catalogue that one day we're going to get around to. But oh, not really. I think I think my Steam catalogue sitting at like six hundred games. Ooh. Let, let Let's see how many I've probably played. A third of them, I've probably got a good three hundred games. I'd say where I have not even pressed that play button once yet, and I bought yeah, it bought, because yeah. it was on Steam sale. Yep, Gabe knows what he's doing. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, and of yeah. course, with Epic Games trying to do their equivalent, um, yeah, and they're giving away their free game. I've got to give them a plug because I just think what they're doing. Oh, absolutely. Stand. The amount of... Away, yeah, one new game at least a week, sometimes two. It was originally going to be six, apparently set as a six-month plan when they first yeah. launched Epic Game Store, but yeah. apparently it's become so popular. Yeah. You know,
So they gave away GTA Five. That's yeah, it's kind of saying something. I yeah. completely appreciate that the the way they're going to be the way Rockstar's going to make the money now is the online version, but that's not the point. They yeah. gave away GTA Five. GTA Five. Yeah. So some they're of those going... games that have gone on Epic free to play, I've kicked myself. So I've gone. Oh, I bought that a year ago. But yeah. in hindsight, Metro. you're not going to know that. Yeah, Metro 2033, uh, Remnant yep. from the Ashes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, were, we were joking with a couple of our community members because I think he just did a, a Steam sale less than a couple of weeks prior to Epic releasing like a, a timeline platform with the next six weeks. <laughs> and on there were mm. two of the titles that he paid full retail for. Yeah. And he was just kicking, he was jokingly kicking himself. Of course, he doesn't care. Obviously, we want to give back to developers when games are good. But at the same time, though, yeah, I think it's outstanding. And I do, mm. apparently, it's for every one sale on Epic Game Store. There's ten on Steam, so mm. although they have come up a lot from being a no, well a nobody in the sales aspect of PC games, um, Steam's still in a league of their own. Yeah, miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steam, Steam's your go-to platform for PC gaming. It has been yeah. for years, and I think it will continue as long as Gabe allows it to. It's all it's in Gabe's hands. It's the iTunes of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, massively. Yeah, if you meet another PC gamer, you, you always ask, oh, what's your Steam name? I'll add you. you know, like, exactly. It just goes hand in hand. Yep. Although Steam has the AAA titles, I think it's the indie games that make Steam. Look at Valheim's success recently. That has blown up. Abs- Valheim's success is one of those games that comes along once every three years and... People can't put it down. People, everyone wants to play it. People love that game. And I'm a survival game fan. I ha- always have been. Like Daisy, for example, Forest, uh, Rust. And this just seems to take all the elements of those games and just goes, here, have the best of everything. We're going to give you PlayStation 1 graphics with a few amazing graphics built in. And then we're like, enjoy guys and their roadmap looks insane i can't see valheim dying off it's going to be massive for two or three years yeah yeah uh, it's a ps1 game with its unity engine lighting effects mm. i think it's what is it close is it if it's either close to or it's just exceeded six million sales through steam yeah and in the uk that's a 1499 game so they haven't done too badly for a no. small company. I don't. Yeah. I honestly don't know um, the the development team size. I think it's under ten no, people. At one point, I could have sworn it. They said it was like six man team. But yeah, they are just a small there. indie developer. But that's they are for sure. Small. And I mean, you can't wish for a, a company better success than that, really. No. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they've not. obviously put the hard work in. They they know their needs. They've taken the best elements of survival games and yeah, and resource mm. management. It's just it's just great. It really really is good. Yeah. I, I, uh, look, look at another uh, indie game that have turned into a massive AAA game now, Roblox. Uh, personally, I've played Roblox two or three times to jump on it, and I've gone, yeah, this isn't for me. But they became a public company, was it two weeks ago? Overnight became a $45 billion company. Overnight. <laughs> Washington's going to go and cash in his Robux very soon. My, my Robux? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Ro- Roblox is targeted at the younger individual. Yep. There's kind of for those that don't know, or wouldn't have thought there's many people. Um, it's kind of uh, can't really say Lego set because that's what Minecraft is. Um, yeah, it's 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 a playground for younger generation of kids to get in the games. There's basically an equivalent Roblox version of pretty much everything out there yep. from capture the flag games yeah. to alien versus predator to Fortnite, even to Minecraft, to racing games, to even to GTA. And it's all, all community popular. developed as well. All the games, all the maps, yep. it's all community driven apart from a few where big companies have got involved. So universal studios, uh, they have a universal map on Roblox where they charge to for entry at certain times it's mad when you can just go in there for other times but they put events on in the game yeah like uh, there was the halloween events still that you do at universal in america you can physically go to roblox and same events will be put on there yeah there was, there was a story recently in the uk press about um two i think i think they were twin boys that developed um, boats or ships within Ro- within Roblox many many years ago, and it said the headline was they would they had just bought their parents their first home. 
with the money they've made from building ships and robots. Mm. Again, another incredible story. It's just someone, you know, yeah. right time, right place, right idea. That's what it's all about. But yeah, again, yeah. yeah. And I'm talking about sure. having right yeah. ideas, the uh, you see the news about the Grand Theft Auto 5 fan? The, uh, yeah. the, play, uh, the PC loading times. Oh, yeah. Completely <laughs> just like obliterated PC loading times by finding a bug that they've had in their servers for years. Um, they've given the guy ten thousand dollars and credited him in the game as well. And that's just a fan that's just done that. Right I think that's insane. Well. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's good. That's a good pat on the back. Yeah. You're yep. a rock star. Well done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ten grand though for them. What's that? A sandwich at lunchtime <laughs> for their staff? <laughs> but yeah. Well, uh, just yeah. the, the acknowledgement yeah. alone is yeah. incredible. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, what other news we got? Dying Light 2 has been confirmed for 2021. I don't know if you guys have played Dying Light 1. Oh, yeah. Insanely good game. Chris, have you played that? Uh, I Again, it's one of the ones I had a dabble with and then uh, dropped off of. At the time, I, had, I had very good friends of mine who were playing through for, for, and they were just telling me it's like the new religion they've just found. Mm. And rightly, so the game, even to this day, looks incredible. I actually oh, it's fantastic, yeah. Just yesterday, streaming Dying Light. And I think that was doing it on PS5 by a PS4 game, but it just looked yeah. yeah, it still looks amazing. It's been one of those games where it's been in development for quite a few years, and it's ch I think it's changed development teams a couple of times where they've struggled like with developers, and it's been like, right, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. And the community behind Dying Light have been like, all right, are we going to get this? Because everyone loves Dying Light. And now we're finally getting it. They've confirmed, I think it was on Twitter, they did a QA and a a couple of days ago. And they've like gone, yeah, we're still here, guys. And we are coming out this year. You will see Dying Light 2 this year. And that's another, apart from Resident Evil 8, that's a game I'm looking forward to. I'm a big, big zombie fan, big Dying Light fan. Yeah, the first one, first one is probably my favorite of the, uh, of, of the open world zombie uh single player uh survival games yeah, yeah. it's just, just fantastic everything about it was just great it, it feels like it's got a lived in world without anybody living in it yeah yeah just yeah. zombies running around yeah yeah it was yeah it was great wow mm. yeah when did that news come out i, I hadn't heard about that oh. just a couple of days ago yeah uh so it was literally i saw it on a um a news channel this morning it they yeah they did a twitter q a a couple of days ago yeah okay basically saying yeah you'll see us this year guys right on that's all yeah i'm just glad it's still got some life left in it yeah 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 i think I that's all the news i've got guys if you've got anything you want to throw in when darn light came out wasn't it wasn't there like a six month gap and then they released some free dlc that made it quite significant as well uh, or may maybe it was chargeable but i do remember there was, no, no, good, there was a chargeable really DLC. dlc for that yeah where they introduced vehicles a new area i forget what it's called yeah. now that's right yeah, yeah. So i remember thinking the vehicles at the time looked like the one from half-life 2 yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. no. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple of new stories that I've, I picked up. One, obviously, the most mm -hmm. recent one is uh, "Rest in Peace Xbox Live." Xbox Live just took a rebranding as of I think it was yesterday. So it's now going to be called the Xbox Network. So obviously, Xbox Live's been with us since two thousand and two, and lasted up till mm -hmm. well, a week ago. Is that from um, the three sixty? I believe it started. Yeah, yeah, all the way back then with the lovely blade is at the face. Yeah, Did you know it was before Chris. It was on the original Xbox, I believe. Oh, Xbox. Yeah, yeah Xbox. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it was released with the 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 the, the OG Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's quite a significant update. I mean, obviously, all it is is a rebranding. To be fair, um, but yeah, I think that's quite substantial. And of course, what mm. with the news as well of the PlayStation Three marketplace being taken offline as well. That sort of thing. yeah. As a lot, along with uh, P PSP and Vita as well. Yeah, yeah. So their marketplaces are going to be no longer. I'm not sure yeah. the exact twi switch off date, but yeah, it's soon. It's, yeah, I, personally, I was I was a huge fan of the P PS3. Um, yeah, I've got there's some good memories of me on that machine. Yeah, so I, yeah, the marketplace will be missed. They're in they're indie stuff that first hit that when that machine went live was just amazing. Mm. Was yeah, console. really, really was. I've still got my old brick one somewhere. Oh yeah, I've got all my consoles, everything here. Yeah. So as yeah. as they start to phase out these old, uh, uh, you know, obviously shutting off the the PlayStation Three store, um, and I think they're shutting off a couple others. I heard about that story too. Art, can you could I could I still use that console? I because 
I mean, if I wanted to, could it, is it still even yeah. worth having around, or is it just a brick now? No, the, the consoles yeah, are still, still work fine. Any games you've downloaded that obviously don't have an offline connection will still be online. That will be down to the publishers individually. It's just you'll, you'll lose the ability to be able to purchase new stuff. Mm. Okay. It's the stores so, they're shutting off, not the servers. Yeah. Yeah, and of course the services in the background of each of the game titles is dependent on the publisher, not necessarily the PlayStation side of things. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's sad, but obviously, yeah, everything has a... I'm personally, on a personal note, I'm more concerned about game preservation. And I know there are a lot of companies, well, there's some um, North American companies I know for sure that, that take that really seriously. That, you have to excuse me, I don't know the exact names of them, but yeah. Their, their focus is on preserving online games and allowing people to play them indefinitely whenever they want um so yeah, yeah there'll be a lot more i'm sure we can actually dig into that a lot more on a, a much later podcast maybe yeah. on, not necessarily a documentary by any means but just a, a, a lot of insight into it where i'll be able to share a lot of information on things like that yeah i'd be interested yeah. in that games preservation is yeah i mean where do you play your msx games nowadays other than through illegal manners or some web interface that lets you run a java program you know yeah, there are. Yeah, I'd love to for there to be like a UK equivalent to a, a gaming museum for historians and stuff. But yeah, that's just me fantasizing. Don't worry about me. <laughs> so apart from just as gamers being a streaming brand, we're also a streaming community. We've got a hell of a lot of streamers that have been popping in and out lately. Well, not popping out, maybe popping in, but they're live a hell of a lot. Um, so one of the guys I've been watching is a guy called Finch. A uh, a lot of Pokemon. He streams a hell of a lot of Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> he's quite a fun guy. Um, I believe he's Mexican and lives in the Netherlands. Which is, uh, yeah. And he's got a very, very... It's... English is insane. He's... He could probably speak better English than I can. But yeah, he does a lot a lot of Pokemon streams. And um, he has quite a little uh, cool thing where at the bottom of his screen, um, he'll have Pokemon running along with your name above it. So as you follow... It comes up above his head. That's quite cool. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think I checked him out at some point. I did see that and think it was a really, really good touch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, um, being a, a huge Genshin fan, um, Fanta Lily um, was scre- streaming yesterday, and she was talking about needing to hit a- AR-13, which is a, long story short, which is a level in like a tower you have to hit in order to get yeah. power upgrade stuff. And she asked a couple of general questions, and I was sadly able to answer a lot of them. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> Yeah, she's a great streamer. Um, I hope to see a lot more from her in the future. Yeah, and I hope personally to get some Genshin in myself because I've had a mm-hmm. couple of people mentioned in, in the Discord. Are there, are there any Genshin players in there? And I was like, yeah, yeah there are. Me! <laughs> Waving, but no one could see me. I didn't have webcam on. But that's great. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the impact we've had. Um, I say there's some, there's some great streamers in our channel. Really, really yep. good. And we'll obviously, we'll do whatever we can within our power to help them in any way we can. Absolutely. We're all about growth. All about growth here. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I mean, just just watching the watching one of the Discord channels here, just seeing all the people join in the last week or two, you know, um, and then just seeing all the streamers online now, it's 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 crazy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, knowing you guys a year and seeing where it is now, it's just the the community is just just blowing up. Um, I don't know, I don't know how you guys keep up with it, but yeah, I've been watching a couple <laughs> of uh, been been trying to flick through and give everybody a little bit of support. Um, yeah. Watching a little Yuki last night, playing uh, playing one of the new Tomb Raider games. I forget which one it was, but uh, oh well, I suppose yeah. it wasn't Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, He's the first yeah, to admit. It's, uh, there's yeah, there's so many so many streamers now that you guys got. It's uh, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> uh, is it too late to become a streamer? Do you think, Chris? Too late. Yeah. Um, After all the big boom of uh, Twitch, do you think it's too late to become a streamer? No, I think it's it's wrong to go into streaming with the impression that you're going to make millions in a week. Yep. I don't ever think there's a number of ways to get into streaming. It could be because your friends are doing it. It could be because you're part of a group and you want to just see what it's like out there. It could be because genuinely you want to share what you're doing with someone, or it could just be because you're bored and you want to just do something new. Um, yep. It's a bit silly, dare I say it, if you're streaming the most popular games on Twitch. Because as yep. much as you'll probably enjoy them, unless you bring something different that makes you unique, um, unfortunately, you won't stand out. Um, in a group like Just Us Gamers, we can help you get as many eyes as we can on your stream as you're streaming. 
but it's not so much the eyes initially it's the retention it's to mm. keeping the people watching coming back so of course if you've got the right personality the, you know that the, if you're passionate about gaming or the game you're playing or games in general then obviously you've got an open dialogue with your your viewers then yeah anyone and everyone has a chance at doing this yeah especially when you know every month there's the new must play game out there if you do that if you're very open if you're able to assist people as they're also coming on board um what we will be doing in the future is taking some key streamers of ours and building up their entire infrastructure around them so will they'll be doing their six seven hour stream we'll be liaising with them to take what they've put in their stream and create the equivalent youtube content yep which obviously any given streamer realistically doesn't have the time there isn't enough hours in the day to to stream as much as you should gain that bit of audience and then spend the time producing the production equivalent of that on youtube and the cut downs for your social medias that's that is literally where just us gamers comes in we help sort out the back end so you can just concentrate on doing what you do best which is playing the actual games yeah i was looking at a guy the other day who was in our community um in his bio on twitch it literally said i streamed for a joke now i'm here yeah. to stay because i love it yeah yeah i think I've, i must have crossed paths with that person as well i remember reading the same thing yep yep i mean streaming is not for everybody okay. but it shouldn't be it's not something you should do because you're forced to do it you should do it because you want to do it yeah <laughs> that's simple as that yep exactly that yeah and again there, as you say there is a bug you can get it and then suddenly you go Bing, fred's following you and you're like mm. oh hey fred <laughs> and that's where it starts mm. yep yeah, going back to what you're saying about uh, not streaming the popular games, I kind of, I recommend everybody still stream your popular games, but do it once a week, once or twice a week. Like, don't stop playing your favorite games just because you're not getting the views. Just enjoy yourselves. Don't stream initially to think, I'm going to make a load of money from this. Do it for fun. Because if you're not doing it for fun, why are you doing it? I hate to give him credit for it, but. Purple Lemon, I think it was, actually said something yesterday in the Discord, which is, do yourself a huge favor when you're streaming. No matter how many followers you got, no matter how many views you got, switch off the number so you I don't do. know. I don't, I don't have my views showing. Yeah. I don't treat want to like, know. Treat it like you're streaming to nobody. And yeah. then literally, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just enjoy yourself. You're, you're there to play a game because you want to play a game, not because you also want to play a game and entertain. That's just a byproduct. Yeah, exactly. If, you, if you're lucky enough to get a following out of it, then fantastic yeah great mm -hmm. it'll only open up more opportunities and more you know doors and windows for you both washington you ever thought about being a streamer streaming your uh, gameplay that's why you yeah. bought a webcam <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think i think everybody's thought about everybody who plays games has thought about it at some point you know at least considered it yeah um but whether it be seriously or not um yeah and it, it's crossed my mind a few times um especially getting into uh you know, meeting you guys, mm -hmm. um, and you guys are all about streaming. It just, yeah, the the idea is there. Um, I just haven't seriously sat down to think about how I do it, what I would do. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I've I've considered it. Um, have you ever heard of a streamer called Oda Block? That's not one that's crossed my cross my path. No, he, he has a very particular audience because he 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 streams old school RuneScape. Cool. Um, you know, which is a I mean the the old school version is what seven or eight years old, but yeah. that game is that game is twenty years old. And uh, just going back to that, you know, is it is it too late to stream and um a game like that that is has had countless YouTube videos? Cause I remember watching them back in the day because I, I still play that game to this day and I, I enjoy this guy's content. But you know, he he found a very particular very particular part of that game. Uh, the PVP and some of some of like the the staking and stuff, which is is what it is. But he he found a very niche part of that game, uh, combined it with his with his sense of humor, and he has exploded. He, yeah. uh, Jagex, the the people who make RuneScape, made him the streamer of the year. He's got you know he's he's just he's exploded um, in popularity. So, you know, seeing his story, I don't, I would never tell anybody it's too late to stream. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You, just, you, you find find what you love to do, find what you like to do. Um, find your niche. Yeah, find find your niche. Combine it with, uh, you know, with your personality. I think yeah. there, there's no reason that that nobody should be able to 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. And it doesn't take that high end of a kit now to do it as it did many moons, well, say many moons ago, a couple of years back. Obviously, with PlayStation 4 on Xbox, you, there's literally a share button built into the controller. <laughs> Even if you want to start out just streaming console stuff. There's, yeah. 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 Well, I think it's that time in the podcast where we start to wrap things up, boys, unless you've got anything you want to add to it. No. Nope. All good. I'm good. I'm also good. Okay. Um, well, guys, thank you for joining us on this first Just As Gamers Untitled podcast. I'm sure we will have a title by the time this goes live on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. Uh, all our that. socials will be linked in this YouTube video as well as posted all over the screen right now. If you are a streamer or even just a gamer, come and join us in our Discord. There will be a link somewhere below this video. Uh, we've got loads of gamers to hang out with streamers you, you, you may even find your favorite streamer on there you never know we're all about community so if you're a gamer and you're timid let's say and you want to make new friends come and join us we've got a very very friendly community i mean we found each other through gaming and i'm sure you'll find your best friend through gaming as well so until next time guys thank you very much thanks for stopping by and uh we love you all see you later guys Bye. See ya.